So I'm going to be talking about Surrounded by Idiots by Thomas Erickson. And James is going to be drinking beet greens. Um, I uh, made some dog treats over the barbecue. That's It didn't work out. So, anyway, but our meal did. That looks good. And there's, so it's a Thai kind of barbecue because there's three different kinds of Thai sauce on our vegetables. Oh, you went for all three days. I did go with all three things. Yeah, I had three. three different colors as much as anything. I did. Plus, you wanted yeah. to see. Oh, sorry. I see, it works out. Like a few years back, I wouldn't have been able to pull that. It would have been too acrobatic for me. So, I've been munching on this a little bit because it's good. <laughs> you knew it was good already, eh? Before you started munching. Mm. That's hilarious. Yeah, uh, sometimes the cook knows just from the smell or whatever, but... No, the cook knows because the cook keeps eating while the cook is cooking. That's how the cook knows. This is true. You know how they say that... That, uh, cooks, but no, I can taste it. I know what Cooks that. don't enjoy the meal as much because they've experienced it from smelling it? No, they're just already full. <laughs> <They've> already <laughs> <laughs> That's, yeah, this study was done by someone who doesn't know yeah. cooking. Cooking's fun. Yeah. Well, unless you're just making something from a box or something, I guess then you yeah. don't. Yeah. And really, the cook isn't doing the job if they're not tasting mm-hmm. it. So. Yeah, that that's that's one of those flawed studies. Mm-hmm. There are thousands of them out there, sadly. Anyway, this book is it's basically it works on this quadrant system. You've seen it before, I'm sure. It's how you can how it's been popular for quite some time now about how to categorize people in your about fifteen years. One of four about different 15 types. Fifteen years when ago uh, when we were getting together mm-hmm. uh, we were doing an analysis we wrote a yeah, test right. out we and stuff like that, that. Yeah. and we were laughing there was some person that we yeah. work with who will go n- nameless mm-hmm. right here uh, who, but I can't uh, we really show you because they classic yellow personality there. I don't think I can take this out without yeah I, I wouldn't bother no but they've put the information on on the inside and I can't really show you but um, imagine this guy is up here and this guy is down here <laughs> <laughs> no, this guy's here, this guy's here, this guy's here, and this guy's here. There. Mm. And uh, so anyway, just picture that. Um, red, bold, and brash. Reds are natural-born leaders with ambitious goals. Yellow, true social butterflies. Yellows are creative and optimistic. Green, the most selfless of the bunch. Greens are relaxed, friendly, and loyal. Blue with keen minds. Blues are analytical and detail-oriented. So, um, now there's a lot of, I had trouble with this because there's a lot of things that, like, I'm not aggressive at all, I would say, but, um, like, a lot of these, I, I would say I'm in both of these categories for quite a few of them. I think I'm pretty patient. I mean... I spend a lot of time with chihuahuas. Yeah, if you hadn't Anybody been patient to start off with, yeah, you kind of had it beaten into you. Yeah, but you were patient before. It. Anyway, um, but not as patient as Copper was. The Bassett. Yes, he was, he was a patient. Good. But um, anyway, I uh, I don't think of the yellows as being creative. It's a different kind of creativity. If you think about it, the blue is like, okay, this will probably be easier just showing you on the cover. These guys are dominants, and the author uses the term dominant in this book. When I learned of this quadrant system, they use driver. But what they're like is they're people who like drive uh, muscle cars around. Mm. They're that kind of driver. They're, they're driver. They're the one driving the whip. Well, they've got their whip, but... Uh, yeah, yeah, they're holding the whip. So, um, and these guys, they're not going to be at the end of the whip. It's it's going to be no, these guys. No, no, they don't care. They no. do not have a responsibility in the world. You know? No, they're... Yeah. These, okay, if you picture these guys as the uh, CEO of the corporation, who's like, he's 
I don't know what he's doing. He's on some yacht or something. And then he calls in and he's like, we're going to have a board meeting because um, I'm only making a profit of this much and I deserve a profit of much more. And so he flies in and he talks to this person mostly because this person's the one who's actually doing the brain work to make this guy get some profit. So <laughs> this guy is the one, let's say that this is CEO of a pharmaceutical company because I was talking about pharmaceuticals earlier. So this guy's the CEO of a pharmaceutical company. This guy is actually the scientist who is coming up with these great uh, new products that are going to make this guy money. Or and in computers. This is Steve Jobs. This is Wozniacki. Jobs is the guys out there. Okay. You know, that, you know. I don't think we were talking. We were. I was talking about pharmaceuticals because I'm going to stay with that. Right. So anyway, um, the green people. They were saying this was the in in this thing. The green people are the. They don't call them submissives in here. What do they call them? Losers. The most selfless of the bunch, yeah, but they don't say that. Um, stable. Stable? Stable. Greens are stable. Okay. Reds are dominant. Yellows are inspiring. And blues are analytical. So, um, these guys are the ones that are out there. They could have most of the jobs are going to be these guys. They're going to be packaging um, the pharmaceuticals and uh, working on the you know handling the deliveries and doing all sorts of things like that you know doing the actual maybe they're even if you if you think about it in a larger scale they're the ones that are getting all of the harvesting the ingredients to put into the pharmaceuticals and so they're doing most of the labor and these guys are doing much most of the thought work and these guys here they're selling the product so they'll be it's a different kind of creativity it's a kind of creativity with marketing or something like that they're the ones who are going to be coming up with the um the slogans the um what is the cover of that product going to look like how how are we going to advertise it stuff like that right it's creativity without responsibility it's parasitical because this guy i mean this is the ultimate in creativity right there's oh, nothing true. without this without this guy there's none of these people have jobs mm -hmm. this this guy is really the leader he's the or leader yeah. or girl and this guy is really the creator this is a creative person this is the one that that makes this this guy should be the one who's head of the corporation but it's this guy for some reason and we don't if know what he if does there's going to actually be a head it really should be a boat but I'm just realizing now how, um, you know, I, I think uh, feminists should legitimately be concerned about stereotyping. See, guy. I know. Uh, well, I, I know. And they they look like two women here. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of. This one is hard to tell, but this one's definitely a woman. Right? Yeah. But um, anyway, we. So been... the, this is the social butterfly. The women are the social butterfly, and they're kind of like the, the servant or the slave. So this guy the in the book, you know, the right away what struck me when I saw this at the library on listed as the new stuff, I was like surrounded by idiots. Oh my gosh, what an offensive title. And mm. you know, you know who, which he fits into. Yeah. Even before you crack open the book and look at who he is, you know which one he is and you know who he thinks are idiots, right? Thomas Erickson is an expert on communication. He works with developing organizations from a leadership perspective. So, and you know, it's interesting because Erickson and um, talking about dominance and stuff like that lately, like I was talking about Pat Calipia, who is she, now he, I'm getting used to it. Yeah, um, sort of. I don't care either way. You know, if if Pat became Patrick becomes Pat again, whatever. It does not matter to me. It doesn't it's what matters is that Pat and Patrick Pat slash Patrick 
dominant, right? That's how Pat identifies as the dominant. Anyway, and Pat likes to whip. And Pat is very honest about um, her, his life and, and activities tastes. and tastes. And I really appreciate that. Because if you read this, or better yet, read, um, I, I showed another book by Pat before Pat became Patrick, where Pat had written a story called The Calyx of Isis. If you read that, you get a better understanding of what's going on here. And you won't be able to fool yourself anymore. Because a lot of the time, you want to believe that this, that this guy here, he is really necessary to the organization. He must be. He really feels like he's oh, yeah. he's selling you on it that he's he's worthy of being in charge and holding the whip on this person. So you're believing it. You're like, oh well, he says it. It must be true. Anyway. No, understand. He doesn't do much of the selling. It gets one of his yellow people. To yes, the selling. yellow people is doing the selling. Yes, you're right. He's yeah. They're convincing them. Um, anyway. Uh, I think basically with bossy people, it's just they crack the whip. It's yeah. not so much selling, it's you do it or else. Yeah. But so anyway, it was interesting too that I have been talking about Vikings lately and stuff like that. Here's an Erickson. Yeah. And uh, how um, medieval England was, um, the people were completely taken over by, they were raided and um, repeatedly. And uh, the Vikings took it, it, people and slaves and yeah. this and that. And, yeah, so anyway. they were taken so over we're initially by the Germanic predecessors of the Vikings. And mm -hmm. then the Vikings came and took over a huge whack of English territory. And uh, in the middle part, eastern and middle part of England, northern part. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the Vikings took over around a thousand and then the, they took it over even more powerfully under William uh, 1066. So William I was going to talk about a few things here um, from this book and I've bookmarked it so I don't forget because I often forget and then I'm like oh I forgot to talk about. Okay so with if you read Pat, Pat or Patrick's and Patrick's work over the years then at some you know there there are key things that you should clue into because Pat is very honest about and oftentimes when you're in a relationship that's a dominant submissive sort of relationship as a submissive you want to believe that the dominant either cares about you or there's some sort of you know cares about um, the relationship something right and uh, the dominant though like Pat has mentioned that Submissives want to be owned. From Pat's point of view, submissives want to be owned. So if you're a submissive and you're at that end of the whip, understand that your dominant thinks you want to be owned. They have convinced themselves of that. And they, they really do believe you're an idiot. They do. They have had to convince themselves of that because there is no way that anybody could treat another person like that without convincing themselves that they are somehow lesser. Okay? So understand that. When you're at that end of the whip, realize it. Don't fool yourself. So I'm on page 226, 227 here. And... Um, this is talking about uh, Aztecs. Uh, fire people were exactly as it sounds, fiery, explosive, a bit hot-headed. They were warrior types who took the sword, took to the sword to get their own way. They were leaders, this guy says. The Aztecs, yeah. Yeah. Well, so they weren't very popular They had divided with the it into four, peoples. like a quadrant system, too. Mm -hmm. um, air people were different. They were also determined, but considerably more easygoing. They swept in like a captivating wind, kicking up a little dust in the process of the air, that's the yellow people. Um, earth people worked for the village, for the collective. They actually care about each other and making sure that the group holds together. Um, they had to ex 
exemplified stability and security. They were there to create long lasting things, to build for the future. So these are these people. Yeah. What about water people? Water was an element that Aztecs had respect for. Water can crush everything in its path, but you can also bottle it as you know how, if you know how to do it. Quiet and secure water people observed everything that was happening. And the water people are the blue people. So there was some respect for the blue people. Now, um, James had talked to um, a native person recently that said that they own, they didn't actually have chiefs or leaders most of the time. They would only pick one when they were um, when they needed military help, sort well, of thing. Some sort of help. It was not necessarily the same thing. Let's say they ran into trouble with the drought or something like that. It'd be a different person. Okay, so then they Just picked somebody, they thought, yeah, who was best at that, for that right? Challenge. So it wasn't. Oh, yeah. Okay, so I put it wrong. Um, no, you basically got the right idea. Well, I mean, what I'm saying is, these guys, if they were the fiery people that were good on with the sword and this and that, well, when would they be picked? That's what I'm saying. Not all the time, right? Unless you're at war all the time, if that's what you want to be. Mm -hmm. Um. So where was I on? Okay, I don't know what I was going to say about this part. Oh boy, I have to do a different system than even my bookmarks. So, um, page 191, they, he has in here ch challenging combinations. So, he says that the blue and the yellows don't get along very well, that they're challenging, right? The, the reds and the yellow are the extroverts, the blues and the greens are introverts, they're passive, and, um, The people at the top, um, blue and red, are task-oriented and issue-oriented, and the green and yellow are relation-oriented, complementary combinations, natural combinations, anyway. Uh, but, um, oh, and I forgot to say that, um, oh, it doesn't matter. So, anyway, the blues and the yellows have challenging relationships, and the greens and the reds have challenging relationships, and honestly, I do not see it this way. I see it as, if you look at some of the characteristics as red, aggressive, aggressive ambitious, strong-willed, goal-oriented, pushing, problem-solver, pioneer, decisive, innovative, impatient, controlling, convincing, performance-oriented, powerful, results-oriented, initiator, speed, timekeeper, intense, opinionated, straightforward, independent, and then you they look at... They left out sphincter-like. Yeah. And then you look at green, patient, relaxed, self-controlled, reliable, composed, loyal, modest, understanding, length, lengthy, stable, prudent, discreet, supportive, good listener, helpful, producer, persistent, reluctant, thoughtful, conceals feelings, considerate, and kind. Now, how now, are they going to be in? Who's not getting along there? Yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. you know who the problem is mm -hmm. in that relationship. Mm -hmm. It's not challenging to get along with a green. A green, easy as pie to get along with. Everyone can get along with a green. Red, no one can get along with a red. That's the truth of it. Especially and, another red. Yeah, so anyway, like I, my um, last boyfriend, he was a red, and at the time I was um, working for a red, it was extremely stressful for me. Um, but then I ended up with James. So had I not been working with a red and then coming home to a red, I probably would have just kept coming home to a red, honestly. Forever and ever and ever. And I never would have... But it's it's it. funny. There is something maybe valuable to come out of this chart, right? Yeah. Which is... Uh, so we got this uh, format here. And we were talking about dividing everything up into dominant and submissive. Mm -hmm. and I was going. Well, I'm these not are submissive. the ultimate submissive, but yeah. they don't have to be. They can be passive. Well, you see, these ones are really the just, passive ones. Yeah. True. And that's how I characterize myself. Even mm -hmm. before I saw this chart, I said I'm not submissive. I'm definitely yeah. not dominant. I'm passive. The greens are going to tend to be, but you yeah. know, you can pick who 
do you want to work for this guy? Or do you want to work for this guy? Or with this guy? It's better to or work with, with other this people. guy. I mean, you're not going to work with this guy. Yeah. You're never going to work with this guy. Yeah. Understand that. He thinks you're an idiot. No. So you're really not going to work with these folks no. here because uh, they don't work. <laughs> no. They're well, kind they of like do. Parasite. Well, sure, but they do. So, they do something. I call um, them social butterflies, but they're really anti-social butterflies. They really don't believe in hanging. In most workplaces, but mm. if they're in like the entertainment world yeah, or exactly. in yeah. uh, marketing, um, something like that, but yeah, okay. or even in the art world. There oh, could definitely in the art world. They, yeah. they could fit in, yeah. um, and 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 things could get done yeah. thanks to them. So it's of not, course in the art world nowadays. It's a lot is just selling oneself. So it is so thing. that's nowadays in the art world. That's where the yellow is going to fit in, and it's yeah. not really because they're creative. Yeah. These guys are way more creative. The blues. Yeah. I mean, they're really if if. Um, it was just these guys working in the village. Um, stuff, would get stuff would get done. These guys, less gets done because of these guys. When they're involved, you just take them, you go send them off to battle or something. Well, because the once won't these fight. guys get, yeah. no, they won't. But yellows are zeros. The reds are minus. They're a minus. Yeah. If you can get those right out of the picture, yeah, more right. will get done and it will yeah. get done better. Yeah. It, these guys, I remember I was taking um, a, a little, it was a little course, I don't day course about this thing, mm. about the system, and at the time it was driver was not dominant, but anyway. And the guy, he was, he was a driver teaching it, um, because, well, you got to do something if you're a driver. Um, and uh, anyway, he was talking about this IKEA shelf. And how he's putting together an IKEA shelf, and you know, at the end of it, he had plenty of leftover pieces, but the thing was together, and that was that was fine, you know, because uh, with drivers, they've got a, they're on a time uh, a schedule, and time is money, and if it's not done right at the end, I guess that's fine, you know, for them because they're on to something new. We got to get that done so we can get on to the next thing, and uh, but the fact of the matter is. The shelf wasn't put together because you had leftover pieces. Yeah. So it was never put together right. Now we have to, we, and we have to take it apart and put it together right. So you actually wasted time. And resources. Because by there's no putting the thing together. And you like, might have wrecked it in the process. Of course. Like you if know? it's a wooden shelving, you're going to put screws in there. And, you know, wood screws. You're going to yeah. screw it up. They're just useless. But you see the pun. And then see, see the deal is it's got to be done because you got to put books, books weigh a lot. You got to put it on a shelf. It's going to collapse. 